All right, guys, this is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and today I got uh, Adam Geffert, one of the head analysts of White Diamond Research, on the podcast, and he's going to go over the latest short report from White Diamond Research, which is on PLSC. Uh, and yeah, what's up, Adam? How's it going? Hey, pretty good, David. Um, yeah, we we found a good a good short report of a good company that we're ex- we're exposing. Um, and just to tell a little bit about about our our group, um, we do we do a lot of deep dive, deep due diligence in stocks. Uh, I work with v- very high level analysts, um, biotech experts. I I work with PhD and medical devices. And we used to really deep dive into this company, and we we basically found that the company is it's it's basically a pump and dump. Um, they they've mislead their their investors. Um, yeah, there's there's no real he- healthcare experts or medical device experts that are invest- invested in this. It's all retail investors and index funds. So we're here just to expose the truth about this company to um, show evidence that shows that um, a lot of what the management says is bullshit just to pump the stock. And they're basically looking to unload their shares onto retail investors. That's a, that's what we believe. And the evidence shows that the pulse biosciences with their nanopulse technology, it, it's a joke. A pulse is years late to the pulse field of ablation market that they're they're moving into right now. And they say they have a, a new technology called nanosecond technology. But the fact of the matter is it's not new. It's already been tested and, and tried. And it's and it's actually impractical, which for reasons that we'll we'll show later in the report. Now, what we're going to go over in this in our conversation is is just kind of the basics of why it's impractical. But for your viewers and people who who are really scientific and want to know the the technical details about it, they can they can go deeper in the report because we also go in detail about why uh, it's it's impractical, and we go into all, all kinds of scientific numbers and details on why. The nanosecond technology is impractical. The, the, the companies that they're competing against, which they, they conveniently don't mention in their earnings call, but they're competing against huge companies like Boston Scientific, Medtronic, uh, Abbott, you know, Biosense, Webster, who, who have just gone into this field. It's a relatively new field over the last five years or so. And they've they already have they already have their uh, their, tr- their trials, their clinical studies, they have a bunch of patents. And they all decide to use micro pulses. They don't want to use the, the nano pulse. Okay. Now, now the now, but well, let's let's go back now to to the dermatology vertical where uh, where they all said they were going to have great success, but they didn't. All management said they they would have great success. Management already shown that they're that they're very incompetent by by the by all of their failure of, of having success. With their NPS advice, NPS advice, which is nanopulse stimulation, and that's just for the skin, just to um, stimulate lesions or warts on the skin or or uh, abnormalities on the skin. And their big investor, Robert Duggan, their billionaire investor, he he does he doesn't know too much about the technology of it. He's just he's just an investor that had a, had a windfall several years ago and has, has made some great investments. But he's showing he he has very limited understanding. Of, of this technology and you can show it right here in these early quotes like in uh quarter four 2017 he says that i've been a shareholder uh for over a year i've grown increasingly optimistic about the technology so he's just learning a little by little about the technology and then you can see in 2019 he's like he's extremely confident he's like yeah over 2000 lesions treated he's like i'm super confident he has no concerns or doubts that it's going to be a huge success well, him and the rest of the management were dead wrong. It, it was it was a complete failure. You know, they, they got it uh, approved in the United States, Canada, and uh, the EU. Uh, it's February two thousand twenty one. They they got they get finally got uh, five ten clearance for the with the FDA to sell it uh, to physicians in the United States, and they also in two thousand twenty one they got it, they got it approved to be sold in the EU and also in Canada. But after all that, it was a complete failure. They only they only sold two million dollars worth uh, between um, quarter three two thousand twenty one and quarter three two thousand twenty two, and that wasn't even real revenue. They actually they actually gave the devices for free to physicians and called it revenue, 
and and, uh, and nobody wanted to buy it. It, it was just a complete bust. So um so now the now so now they've completely abandoned their dermatology vertical. They don't want to. They it was just a failure. And now pulse field ablation is this new industry and market that now they, they've moved into that. So now they're saying, okay, we're going to do that. So instead of just calling it quits, just, you know, uh, just shutting down the company, um, the, the, they've, they've gone into this other area. And uh, Robert Duggan, the billionaire, he, he, uh, is, he's doubling down now. Um, he put in a huge $65 million debt. And then, he, and then later he decided to convert it into equity. And we believe that that they're, he's going to try to dump it off to retail investors to sell off his shares to retail retail investors because we we don't believe that that they believe it's really believe this is going to be a success. And as we show in our report, their nanosecond pulse field ablation is impractical and and it's not new. So Ferropulse is the leader in PFA pulse field ablation, and it was acquired by Boston Scientific. And they actually claimed nanopulse technology in his patent portfolio. They have that technology in the portfolio, but they they decided not to use it. They refer, prefer to use micro pulse because of the inferior nature of nanopulse uh, electro electroporation. And um, pulse, so pulse doesn't have any patents at all in this technology. All of their patents are related to their failed endeavor with dermatology. And in fact, Pulse might actually be infringing patents if they actually try to make it somewhere, which we think it'll fail right off the bat, and management knows this. But if they happen to get anywhere with it, Ferropulse already has the patents on it, so so they um you know they could uh be infringing on Ferropulse. And the other big companies like Medtronic, Abbott, they they've also never even pursued Nanopulse technology, so none none of them have a, any interest. And this technology, and so that that also says something. If if there was something to this, it, it would probably be uh, be be used because they they've already done studies on this. Like they've already done a study on rabbits eight years ago of nanopulse technology. Um, in early two thousand twenty two, they did uh, a study on pig hearts. You know, healthy pig hearts, and pulse just basically copied that that pig uh, pig study. And what's also um, interesting um, is that they're also not pursuing the clamp, like which Pulse is pursuing. Pulse is get it, it has told um, investors that they're going to try to get five ten k clearance with no clinical data. They're going to try to get their clamp approved, but and they might actually get it approved. However, it's not, there's immaterial revenue from car, for cardiac uh, ablation. With the clamp, because that's for open heart surgeries. The the um um pulsed cardiac the, the pulse cardiac ablation is is just going through with a catheter going through the veins, like in the neck or the or the arms, reaching the heart. However, the clamp, the handpiece, is used for open heart surgery, and there there's no evidence that it works with open heart surgery. No, like I said, none of those big guys are going after it with open heart surgery. You know, Abbott, Boston Scientific, which was his leader, they have no interest in the clamp. And so Pulse is, is going after a dead end here. It's going to be a waste of time and investor dollars by getting the clamp approved. And they're, and what makes it even worse for Pulse is they're not even going to do any clinical studies. They're just going to get it approved with just preclinical studies. And since they're not doing any clinical studies to prove its uh, efficacy, efficacy and safety, they're they're not going to get any revenue because there's no physician that's going to use it. You know, Pulse is basically saying, "Here it is. We we have no. We're not guaranteeing any safety. We, you know, it might not even work, but here it is. You can buy it. There's no physician that's going to buy this. You know, and, and risk um, you know risk a lawsuit if it ends up being dangerous and and not working. Whereas Atricure uses RF radio frequency ablation. They're they're the, they're already the leader at this." And um, you know that's so. So the clamp is just that's just an example of of them misleading investors. Like Pulse is just wants to show investors that they have something going on. They have something happening, and and you you can even take a, take a look um, at, at all the different devices they have. So you, so the, the, this shows the 
all the all the products of, of Boston Scientific. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, show all the all the different devices here. Um, scroll down on there, and it shows that none of these is a clamp. None of this is, is the handpiece for open heart surgery. It's all to, to for the catheter for the um the the uh, pulse field ablation catheter. And, Adam, that reminds me of the the report that you guys did at White Diamond Research in 2020. I think last year, and this is when the when the Ukraine war was happening and a lot of uh, smaller companies were trying to jump on the bandwagon of a uh, of a uh, getting mentioning defense contracts and stuff on their headlines and PRs and one was Ironet IRNT which is one of the stocks that you guys exposed and the concept of that one was mentioning that the big companies are going to get the defense contracts from the governments and this and, and all those that kind of stuff and IRNT is not. IRNT is just a small company. It's never done anything before. Why would it get all of a sudden get a big defense contract? And um, yeah, so it, right now, I think it was trading around five, six dollars at the time, and now it's it's less than a dollar. It's around a dollar. So yeah, what do you think of that? Is this a similar situation here that you know IRNT was like we called it the fake McCoy. The real McCoy is is the the big companies. In this case, it's Boston Scientific and this these other companies and so yeah plsc is not it, it can't compete it's it's the fake mccoy what do you think yeah yeah it's absolutely there's parallels there i mean we, we see we see a common thing with these tiny companies they say oh yeah the big companies are doing this we have some new technology here that the big companies haven't even looked at yet so we're we're gonna you know, take market share from the big companies but it's usually bs and it's certainly bs in this case like like, like i said you know nano pulse has already been been tested. It's already shown that you know it's a practical. You know it's already been looked at, and the big boys are not not even going near it. And it also goes to show like how crazy the valuation of, is a pulse right now. Like I wouldn't be surprised if it also goes to like fifty cents in a year, um, because right now the market cap is over four hundred million, and um, Boston Scientific acquired Ferropulse. Doesn't have any patents on Nanopulse? Um, PFA, you know, preventing other companies from using or studying it. And Medtronic and Abbott haven't, haven't done any studies with nan nanosecond PFA and don't, don't seem to have any interest in it. And, um, and you know, since Ferropulse, they have the patents on it. Obviously, it's their choice which pulses to use. And, and they selected longer, longer micropulses. I believe the reason why these companies aren't, aren't using nanopulses is because using nanopulses in the non-thermal ablation range it requires too high a voltage, which makes it more makes the catheter more expensive and trickier to build. And we discuss it more in detail later in the report. We don't have to go in detail now. Now, but the, the, basically, the, since it requires too high too high a voltage, the the catheters need to be made to to be able to withstand it, withstand that voltage, and that's a harder build. So Pulse has has a you know high mountain to climb to create a catheter better. Than the other other um, catheters. See here, these are very beautiful uh, creations by these companies. Um, you can see on the far left uh, that's Ferropulse's or Boston Scientific's catheter. The middle is uh, Medtronic's catheter, and then the right is Medtronic's first catheter before they acquired Apera. So now they have an even better catheter. So these are not easy to build. These are very complex uh, to build, and they're they're very beautiful. And Pulse, they they don't even have their cat catheter made, and they actually have one patent application. And the the patent application doesn't even describe how how they made the catheter that they're using for the pig studies. So that's a big mystery. What what are they using for their pig studies? How are they how are they using their the cardiac ablation ablation with the pigs? They don't say how they're going to make the catheter. And I believe they haven't even created the the, the catheter yet. That's going to be really tough. Um, because nanopulse just isn't being used. So now what we want to analyze is, is a recent earnings call by Pulse, which is which is kind of a pumpy call. We, I just smell bullshit in these quotes. So let's start with the first one with, from Kevin Donahue, which is the the uh, the CEO, and he says that they're they're using the the NSPFA in inhuman surgical procedures. Now what they've used it for is thyroid nodule stimulation. Now that's not ablation, that's stimulation. And so it's very similar to what their failure 
failure uh, dermatological procedures. It no, has nothing to do with cardiac ablation. So for him to say that, that now they're, they're going to focus on thyroid nodule stimulation and your thyroid is actually, it's a gland underneath the skin in your neck. That tells me that they're actually not 100% focused on cardiac ablation. They're still looking looking for other stuff because they they don't they they're they're uh, they have doubts about success with their cardiac ablation. This there was a good question that was in the in the call that, that they asked. You feel like you can compete in these spaces? Now they, these now Pulse does not mention who they're competing against. Medtronic, Boston Scientific, and all their all those. So I feel like the, the answer to this this question was knee jerk. It was kind of a bullshit answer that wasn't specific at all in anything. So first, Donnie says they have 15 years of experience with NS pulse field ablation. I call I call bullshit on this answer. They haven't mentioned cardiac ablation at all in their um, previous calls until recently. And they have no patents on it at all, even though they have tons of patents on their nanopulse stimulation. Now, stimulation is a lot different from ablation. Stimulation is just a, a much weaker pulse. Then ablation is is ablation. It, it it's ablates. It destroys the cell. And, and then also, um, so Donaghy answered. That's that's the CEO. And then and then their their former CEO, now the ch chief technical uh, officer. Um, scroll down a little bit on there. Um, you can see Euchre. Then he says fluff like, well, it doesn't matter. What matters is what patients and physicians think. And and we and we showed one physician. And he decided to join us as the you know, chief medical officer. Well, that doesn't really say much. Yeah, it's true that physicians, physicians and patients think about it, but remember how much they said about how much they raved about the, the dermatology using it on the skin after having 2,000 lesions removed, and they said how much physicians love that, and it turned out to be a total bust. So you, they, they can't really trust what physicians say. If they ask, what do you think of this technology? The physicians don't want to be rude and say, oh, it sucks. They don't want to say, any, you know, what's not nice about it. So I think that's that's also a bullshit answer. In conclusion, you know, Pulse's history is full of failure and wasted investors' money. And we, we see nothing but the same going forward. We, we, we feel like the recent rally from moving to moving to this new uh, new cardiac uh, ablation field is just, is just going to be a complete failure. And in a report that we hope that the investors in this company, they do a deep due diligence about it and they can find the, the report uh, on, our, on our website. And we also don't mind answering questions about it because we know it's a very, it's a complicated um, field. And, you know, it took me a while to, to finally get it. But after we do, do the, all of our due diligence, I just think the stock's worth, you know, at best in $1 a share, likely it's going to go to 50 cents a share or, or lower. But I think, insiders will dump their shares long before that. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Adam, for bringing this to our attention and uh, looking forward to when the report comes out.